Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are in part three, um, talking to um, Karen Newell and Eben Alexander, and we were talking about their book, Living in a Mindful Universe. And at the close of um, segment two, we were talking about um, when you are that really we've got it wrong. Like we think that we're like, this universe is really the primary ground of our awareness, but there's actually, there's something else. There's this primordial awareness that has always been there that we haven't quite been able to tap into or see. And when we actually go into the state of oneness, um, you had said, Evan, um, that we can experience free will and then you also talk about destiny. So I wanted to go a little bit into those territories. And um, yeah, so let's start off with that. Well, I would say the free will question is very interesting because many people uh, who are completely ego driven might claim to have free will, but I, I would say their behaviorists and others might argue that um, if you're simply functioning at the level of the ego mind, that you really are automatonic, that your, your reactions are so uh, predictable and uh, automated uh, that you can't really claim the free will. And I think mm. free will, though, is a very real prospect, especially as we uh, come to examine kind of the deeper aspects of our, uh, of our existence and of these kind of journeys. I and, and that's where I would, I would bring up that example again of, of a placebo effect is showing a manifestation of free will of the higher soul that can enable true healing at all levels. Uh, but it's one of the reasons why that's hard to approach from an ego standpoint is because we're so blinded to vast aspects of our existence when we're limited to the ego mind. So that free will question, a lot of it has to do with kind of definition of what you would call free will and what you would call automatonic uh, kind of responses. Okay, so, so I I what, what I've witnessed in, in all of our work with these workshops and with my own use of, of sacred acoustics meditations for healing and prayer and all that is that I believe it opens up a whole new kind of window of possibility for true manifestation of free will of the higher soul. Because if you weren't, and I don't understand the placebo effect, it, it took me a little, what, what, wait, so what's the, the placebo is like the, how, how is the placebo effect functioning in the free will? Can oh, it has everything that? to do with this because placebo effect is the acknowledgement by the medical profession that a patient's beliefs, attitudes, and thoughts can have a major influence on their health and healing. Uh, and in fact, if you ask Big Pharma, is placebo effect real? They'll go, ah, yes, it's horribly real because out of the gate, it's about a 30% improvement that can come from a patient's beliefs that Big Pharma has to match or do better than to win a placebo controlled trial for their product. Uh, and, and when you get deep into placebo, you realize how powerful it is, uh, for example, Go to noetic.org, that's the Institute of Noetic Sciences website, put in the search term spontaneous remission, and you will find a book they wrote in the mid 90s with more than 3,500 cases of people who healed from advanced cancer, advanced infections, congenital deformities, et cetera, uh, in a way that completely defied Western medical expectations all through the beliefs of the patient. Uh, and I think that is a profound example um, of mind over matter. And it's, it's only stronger when you look at cases of near-death experiences like mine, like Anita Morjani, who had a stage four uh, lymphoma, was within hours of death, ended up having a profound NDE and came back to this world. And today is as healthy as can be. We presented with her many a time. Mary C. Neal, the orthopedic surgeon who had a warm water drowning um, in, in Chile in 1999, wrote a beautiful book, um, To Heaven and Back, but uh, she had more than 30 minutes underwater and she was brought back to uh, you know, the surface dead, uh, resuscitated, had a profound NDE and that's what gave her the healing. She came back completely. Mm. So the more we hear these stories and realize uh, NDEs are kind of like placebo effect on steroids. They're just showing us the capacity of the mind of spirit to help engineer healing of uh, physical, mental, emotional is all ultimately spiritual healing. And that's really kind of the, 
uh, the deeper aspect of this. I get it. So let me see if I can, and if I've got this right. So, you know, there's the CJ, little CJ, who's like, I'm going to go create a list and create a plan. You know, this is a person who's trying to control reality um, based on a set of pre-programmed unconscious beliefs that I've had like throughout my life about productivity and being Asian, whatever. Okay, so there's that little CJ. And then there's the higher mind, um, which is the higher self, maybe call it big C. So there's probably no identity with it, but there's the higher mind, not the mind in our brain mind. There's the higher mind that actually has, um, and, and if we go into oneness, we tap into that higher mind and that if we go into flow with that higher mind, it heals everything. And so I, I think that's what you're saying. So that it's about being in this living synchronicity with that higher mind. Is that what you mean? So it was free will then defined as living in synchronicity to that higher mind? Right. It's basically establishing a relationship with that higher mind. And the important thing to remember about higher mind is you can't claim to possess it as part of yourself because yeah. higher minds overlap. <clears throat> when you uh, study and talk to a lot of people who've had near-death experiences, you'll find it's not uncommon for them when they're deep in the midst of the crisis to experience other people's thoughts, you know, thoughts of people or other places in the hospital, both family, friends, and strangers, as well as the thoughts of those who might be thousands of miles away, for example, on a plane coming to their very sick uh, family member. Uh, yeah. So the boundaries of self start to dissolve. And you yeah, non-local, yeah. Yeah, it's very non-local and it starts to uh, show kind of the commonality of that one mind. Mm. Uh, and that is something that I've also experienced in meditation. In fact, I often do kind of a higher soul to higher soul uh, message when I'm in deep meditation, looking for the highest and best good for all involved. This mm. is where it escapes the, the kind of limitations of ego mind uh, and allows for the highest good for all involved to truly manifest. Mm. And that comes from a spirit of love and a sense of connection, kindness, wanting the best for all. Mm. Uh, and that's where, you know, praying, not just for yourself, praying for your family and friends praying for your enemies is an important concept because you come to realize that no one really has an enemy. Uh, after my NDE, I saw that those who I might have called my enemy or my nemesis before coma were actually near and dear soulmates. We just mm. had especially tough lessons to teach each other. Mm. So it, it's really about the one mind dreaming and growing because this is not uh, a process of uh, just kind of blind, blind, uh, you know, reincarnation that's pointless. It's all about having a soul thread through multiple lives that is leading towards uh, this oneness with the divine mm. over the multiple lifetimes. So it's really uh, about the, the evolution of consciousness itself. So do you guys believe that, that that's ultimately our destiny, which is to find, go back to and return back home to this primordial state of awareness and live and flow with it? Like what, because you had talked about destiny also as well. So how does this, how is this? Okay. Well, I would point to your listeners to uh, uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin's book in the mid 20th century, The Phenomenon of Man. And that's where he took the whole concept of Darwinian evolution, and he amplified it tremendously because he realized as a scientist and as a French Jesuit priest that, uh, he, that spirituality and science greatly strengthen each other. That's a major message of our book, too, of Living in a Mindful Universe. But in uh, Phenomenon of Man, he basically described how all of consciousness is evolving. And that's what I believe is our destiny, our human mm. destiny. That's where this is so important. And in fact, I would say the lessons we're talking about now are lessons that humanity has struggled with for the last 5,000 years or so to get to, uh, mm -hmm. and that we're finally bringing it all together. Just as Karen pointed out, the greatest uh, leading edge wisdom of quantum physics and science of consciousness today uh, basically can still learn a lot from some of the most ancient spiritual traditions coming out of both East and West. Love it. Karen, anything, um, any other closing thoughts before we, we finish up? I can't wait to, I'm so excited about the work that you guys are doing, by the way. 
Well, I would just say that, you know, what we just, dis Evan just described here is exactly that concept that we live in a mindful universe and we are an active uh, participant in that universe, whether we realize it or not. We are contributing to our unfolding reality. So when you really embody this understanding, when you embody the idea that that's what's going on, it really becomes a personal responsibility to contribute your little piece of consciousness in a way that supports all. And so we are all in this together, literally speaking, and this COVID pandemic has been really a manifestation of how that truly is the case when we've all been having to make all of these sacrifices to help other people from not getting sick. But the idea that we're each part of this consciousness really brings that personal responsibility. So I want to encourage people to, it, it's not just, oh my God, now I have to be perfect all the time. It's more of an empowerment that you do have this uh, influence. You're not just an automaton like the uh, dominating materialist worldview would tell you. You are an integral part of a whole. Each and every one of us are part of it. Mm, I love the idea of superheroes wanting to change the world and that we can do that just by sitting on the pillow. I mean, it doesn't sound like a superhero activity, but it truly is. Yeah, what you can do to really help everyone in the world is to take steps to lower any anxiety you might be feeling. And I will tell you very quickly, if you go to sacredacoustics.com, there's a bundle of recordings available, a whole mind bundle that were used in a pilot study in a busy New York City psychiatric practice that showed a 26% reduction in anxiety just after listening to these recordings for a couple of weeks. So you don't have to want to have an out of body experience or something like that. These recordings can just help calm the mind. Mm. And that I would thank anyone who makes the effort to do that. You have my gratitude for contributing that calm mind for the rest of us. I would simply add that pilot study was published in February, 2020. Journal of Nervous and Mental Diseases by Dr. Anna Usam, Y-U-S-I-M. And uh, we've collaborated with her on a mental health practitioner course that people could access at becomingmorewhole.com. Mm, love it. Thank you so much. How fascinating. Thank you, guys. Um, we've been talking to Eben Alexander and Karen Newell, and they will be coming to eastwestbookshop.com. And you can go online, attend their workshop on March 6th which will be one to five Eastern Standard Time and 10 to two Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you, CJ. Thank you. We'll talk again soon.